Oh, very good afternoon to all. My name is Neha. I am from Center for Nanoscience and Engineering, ISC Bangalore. And my talk titled PPP level ammonia detection by exfoliated WS2 based chemiresistive sensors for breath analysis. So before moving ahead, I would like to put some light on the word breath analysis. So as we all know, there are many uh, diagnostics process uh, uh, available today. So, you know, how do we go about it? So first we all visit the labs, give our samples, be it urine, blood, or sputum, and then we, you know, this goes for the processing, and the report gets generated, and you get the medical consultation. Now there are, you know, some loop and hole uh, these, uh, in, in these steps when you see, you know, these labs, they are not available in the remote areas. And uh, these all, uh, when we take the sample, these are invasive methods, which are generally not suitable for infants. And uh, for processing the sample, you need the trained person. And also the report takes time. Now, so here we, you know, go and exploit this breath analysis. So, you know, when uh, this uh, uh, came into existence, when in 1971, Dr. Linus C. Pauling, an American biochemist, you know, he discovered that our breath is a complex gas, you know, it exhales more than 200 VOCs, you know, which can be used to detect a disease. So, say, ammonia, acetone, isoprene, to name a few. Now, you know, our breath uh, has, like, a signature saying that a healthy person and a diseased person, they both have varying concentration of these gases. So you can easily predict like, okay, this person is healthy or diseased. So you know, why can't we exploit it and make a handheld device, which you know, just blow, in, blow into a tube and get the reading out there, and just, okay, you're done, that's all. Skipping all the steps. Now let's come to the origin of ammonia. Why ammonia? So it's a disease triangle, you can see here. It's associated with three different diseases, like gastric diseases, liver diseases, and renal problems. Now, how does it happen? Now, when, uh, you know, uh, you go for exercises, your muscles generate ammonium ions, and it gets converted to ammonia. And then, you know, uh, for example, your gut, you know, there is, if there is some bacterial overgrowth, for example, this helicobacter pylori infection, you know, which is commonly known for this ammonia release. Now, when uh, these are released, ammonium ions are released into your bloodstream, it goes to your liver because ammonia is toxic for your body. It gets converted to urea through the urea cycle, and then, you know, uh, uh, it gets filtered out through the kidneys. So uh, your kidneys filtered out urine, uh, and also, let's say, if your kidneys are not functioning properly, and if your liver is not functioning properly, so this is difficult, you know, this process or this metabolism may, may not happen properly, there may be malfunctioning, and in that case, you may have elevated levels of ammonia in your breath. Now let me come to the outline of my talk. So I'll be uh, talking about, uh, as I in my title I've shown this WS2, tungsten sulfide. So how I you know synthesized this, and then I have uh, char characterization of these nano sheets, and you know sensing of these nano sheets towards ammonia, followed by conclusion in summary. So let's come to the liquid exfoliation of WS2 nano sheets. So we take a bulk powder procured from outside. Uh, this is procured from Sigma Eldridge, and uh, you know disperse in a solvent which has been selected via some parameter we'll be discussing, and taken a particular optimized ratio of 65 is to 35, and you know we ultra we uh, sonicate it so that these sheets can break down and you know we can get the nano sheets, and then we uh, centrifuge them so that the heavier sheets or heavier particles settle down and we get the lighter and thinner sheets on the, t uh, on the top and we collect that supernatant, which is our sample. So what I have done is I have varied the sonication times varying from th three hours to nine hours and kept the centrifugation uh, fixed at 3500 RPM. So uh, what I have observed is the ones highlighted in green, very, uh, the sample one to sample four, they were giving me almost equivalent or decent sensing. But in the sample five, where like I, in, when I, I'm increasing the sonication time to nine hours, I was not getting the response. 
So here what I'll be talking about mainly these three samples. I'll be comparing these three samples in my talk. Now first let's come to the selection of the solvent. So first of all, uh, we have taken this Hansen solubility parameter. So it's a you know empirical uh, formula given by Charles Hansen, and you know which decides uh, whether your uh, solvent solute mixture, you know whether you'll get a good dispersion and how the miscibility is of the solvent and the solute. So how does it decide? Is there is a parameter called R A, which is HSP distance. So it is given by this formula, which takes into account this, uh, you know, dispersive polar and hydrogen bonding. So when I say this del D, it corresponds to this van der Waals forces, which are there within the sheets. And then polar, when it, it counts to the dipole moment and this hydrogen bonding. So it takes, uh, takes into account these three parameters and tells us that, uh, you know, how your solvent and solute interacts. So uh, uh, since we are using here ethanol and water mixture, so we can calculate this mixture using this formula. And so as uh, you know, we know that uh, how when the solvent and solute will have good miscibility. So if this uh, component, if they are nearly equal, so your RA will almost go to zero. So your minimum RA, or you can say the lesser RA, meaning that you'll have a good solvent and solute interaction. And that is how you select the you know optimum ratio for your uh, dispersion of these nano sheets so if we compare uh, say i've taken here ethanol i'm increasing it from 0 to 100% and i'm seeing the lowest value out there so but you know uh, the values here you know if you see in this region they are varying at the second decimal order so they are almost like 11.9296 like that so, you know, we thought like we'll do, because something which is given theoretically and experimentally, we, we know that there are other key factors also playing role, not just that. So, you know, what we thought is like, let's go by experimentally varying these ratios and see what happens. So that is how we experimentally optimized our ratio as 65 is to 35. Now let's come to the material characterization of these WS2 nanosheets. Coming to this XRD, what we observed is uh, this the 002 pl uh, plane of uh, WS2 is uh, you know the intensity is increasing saying that it is exfoliated in this direction and this actually corresponds to 2H phase which is semiconducting phase of WS2 and the other peaks are disappeared if you see the sample 3 to 9 hours there are no other peaks observed so it confirms the exfoliation Coming to the Raman uh, spectra, what we can see here is, if you look at the bulk, bulk is the one which is procured, and the other ones are the exfoliated ones. So we can see there is the you know Raman active modes, even 2G and A1G modes, which corresponds to in-plane and out-of-plane vibrations. And what trend we can see here, the intensity of this even 2G, uh, like uh, ratio of this even 2G, to A and G. If you look at the relative intensity of these, we can see when we are going from you know bulk to few layers, this intensity is increase, increasing, which is very well, uh, which is uh, very well uh, you know reported in literature, and which is very obvious as well because even G is the in-plane vibrations, you know, and the stacking you are removing, you are cutting down to few layers. Your so out of plane will decrease and in-plane will increase, and also here you can see the blue shift and the red shift. So this is uh, also one signature which tells you that yes, you have cut down to the few layers. Coming to the UV spectra, we can see the uh, absorption in the visible range. So here you may you might see uh, it looks like a hum, but you know if I plot it singly, so it's a uh, quite a good peak we are getting at 630 nanometer, which again you know uh, is a signature for this uh, exfoliated nano sheets. Now let's come to the morphology, how these sheets are through this, uh, you know, starting with the SEM. So these bulk uh, particles, you can see bulk uh, nano sheets, they are very big, uh, big in the sense in few microns, varying from five to 10 micrometers. So now when we, you know, go for exfoliation and we see that, you know, we go down to the lateral dimension of somewhere around 300 to 500 nanometers. 
And um, you know, s similarly, when we go for three and five hours, the range or the size is almost similar. But when we go to the nine hours, we generally what we observe was that we had the agglomeration of nanoparticles and nanosheets. You know, it, it means that more you keep for sonication, more you're breaking, more time you're giving it to break down. And it's a very random process. So, you know, here we are getting a lot of agglomeration and a uh, you know, lot of active sites are getting hidden due to that. So when we look at the TEM image, you know, we can see even the monolayers in the TEM for these exfoliated samples. So if you see, there are, uh, so you see, there are some monolayers as well as there are few layers because they are on top of each other. So you cannot exactly make out, even in the five hour samples, we have monolayers as well. And when we see the nine hour samples, so in TEM as well, we could see that, you know, not just this area, everywhere around we could see this agglomeration, but we could not see any sheet lying around, you know, anywhere. It was like almost like an agglomeration. And you know, when we confirm the crystallinity to the SAD uh, pattern, uh, we could see it's highly crystalline, and hex uh, also this hexagonal symmetry is confirmed, and uh, the lattice spacing also confirms that yes, we have got the WS2 sheets. Um, yes, to measure the thickness, we you know went through AFM, and uh, we could see that yes, we are getting getting bilayer or trilayer. Like it's not just, you know, there are different, since it's not a controllable process, we are getting from a monolayer to few layers. So when we come to this sensing of uh, towards ammonia, so, so the best sample here, I'm only presenting the results for the best sample, though I'm getting sensing from this ranging from three to six hours, so I'm presenting for f uh, the optimum as five hours. And uh, so this is the response I'm getting. Uh, you know, it's scaling down from 3 ppm to 300 ppb with the decent response of 80% to 3.8% respectively. And since I mentioned here no annealing, meaning like I did some thermal treatment on these nanosheets, seeing the you know drift characteristic of this non-annealed sample, we thought like let's you know try how does it behave after we anneal it. So after annealing, what we observed was, uh, first thing you see, the response has drastically improved, increased. And because uh, the response has improved, you know, we could really push down lower to 50 ppb from 300 ppb. And the response was also decent of about 4.3%. So, and when we fit it, definitely non-annealed sample gives you a linear fit, but, uh, and this gives you a poly polynomial fit, but, you know, uh, at the end, uh, if you see the response and uh, the lower limit, it's really improved, though it's not linear. But, you know, if you do it in the lower concentration range, it, it will show a linear response. Uh, when we come to the repeatability, we did it at uh, 1 ppm and uh, it was quite repeatable as well. And uh, uh, coming to the specificity, uh, we could see here that uh, you know, the gases chosen here have a significance since we are targeting breath analysis. Uh, the gases which I have chosen are related to that, say H2S, it's called, you know, it's uh, exhaled during bad breath, halitosis. Acetone, it is released during diabetes. So these uh, gases have been chosen, and even the concentrations per se, uh, you know, let's say this uh, 0.5 ppm for NO, 1.8 ppm for acetone. So these are uh, the concentrations, you know, during the disease phase, we could find these concentrations coming out uh, through our breath. So this is, that is how we have chosen the gases as well as their concentrations. So now let's come to the mechanism. So the device, uh, we have taken our standard interdigitated electrodes. Uh, the gap of our fingers were five micron. And uh, this is the same image of my device. So, it, so my material is drop casted on this IDs. And the, so we know the nanostructure of these devices is hexagonal. And this is actually a receptor where the uh, charge transfer process will take place. So we know that in 2D materials how it happens. It's a standard process. Since ammonia is a reducing gas, it's an electron donor. 
So it you know gives uh, electron to the conduction band of WS2 and increase in, sorry and increases the conductivity and the carrier concentration and that is how we see the sensing response. We could see on the purging of the gas my current was increasing. Okay, so you now to compare why, you know, this is, uh, this we know like, this is the mechanism how sensing works. So we thought why it is happening that, you know, annealed and non-annealed, there's a huge difference, though it's still under exploration, but we have few results here. Like if we see the XRD, uh, we could see that we had a very weak peak, if you have observed in my previous plot, of WO3020. But when we anneal it at 400, we could see that uh, this peak has enhanced, but still WS2 dominates. So, you know, uh, and also I would like to point like if you, uh, we did other measurements also here, let's say Raman, but we did not find any signature of WO3 in Raman. So, uh, and also we'll be doing few more characterizations, but uh, till now what we concluded or what we hypothesized is that since WO3020 is not the major peak, major peak of this WO3 comes at around 100 at 23 degrees or so. So, uh, you know, it looks like that this may not be WO3, it may be some WO3 minus X or there may be, due to annealing, there may be some formation of complex of WSO. So, you know, that's, uh, uh, we, this is just our hypothesis. Uh, that is how we are finding that maybe it has improved. And the second thing is, as we know, like, you know, this annealing of the sample, it also uh, removes, because we are using the solvent, ethanol, so they have stains, right, when you drop cast. So they may also, you know, remove these stains and they may, you know, expose the active sites which were before blocked due to these stains maybe. And uh, also, you know, there are some surface adsorbed oxygens on your um, sheets, nano sheets, which uh, further blocks your active sites of sensing. So, you know, so annealing might help in that way also. So, the sensor specifications to, uh, to summarize, so it, you know, the operating range is from 50 ppb to 3 ppm. So, we are, can really scale down to 50 ppb and the response and recovery time is decent, 125 seconds and 59 seconds. And the operating temperature is 250 degrees to benchmark uh, Mm, to, me, to benchmark the sensor, you know, we just uh, looked at all the 2D sensors being explore, explored in literature and we could see that uh, there are very, uh, like, uh, there is no report on 50 ppb, but there are few which are on, like, uh, near around uh, 100 or 300 ppb. And also we are getting quite good response when compared to literature. Yeah, so to conclude, so, you know, what we have done is, so we have chosen the solvent for exfoliation on the basis of Henson solubility parameter and the solvent chosen also is a low boiling point solu uh, um, solvent uh, because you know if you have seen in literature most of the people have used high boiling point solvents like NMPs and yeah. So, um, also, since there is an interplay of other parameters like surface energy, so uh, we have chosen the optimum value via experimental evidence. And uh, yeah, so these WS2 nanosheets, we have seen they have given very good response. It's highly sensitive as well as selective with the good response time and recovery time. And annealing has really improved the sensing performance and also, you know, pushed down the LOD to 50 ppb. As I've already spoken about it, how does it improve? And uh, yeah, so it's really a good candidate for breath analysis. So to summarize, we took the starting material as the bulk powder, characterized it, confirmed the crystallinity, the thickness of our sheets, and got this uh, sensing response towards ammonia. So this, thank you. Thank you very much.